know a child beaten and scorned, cursed by words since the day she was born. Then she met a friend who began to love her fear away. Now you can see her smile. She found her way. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship reigns. Friendship reigns. The power of love cannot be contained. Never mind the foolish ones who criticize, condemn, and complain. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship reigns. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything to God in prayer Oh, a peace we often feel Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship reigns. Friendship reigns. Power of love cannot be contained. <laughs> Never mind the foolish ones who criticize, condemn, and complain. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship rules. Friendship reigns. <laughs> Hello, dear friends. Uh, there was a whole lot more going on up there than a than a. Papa and a granddaughter uh, sharing their heart. Uh, Patty gave me instructions before I left this morning. She said, please don't embarrass me. <laughs> I don't mean to, but, but we've got to be real. And, uh, and one of the reasons we were so amused up here is I forgot to put adhesive on my tooth. And... <laughs> So I'm trying to sing and keep his tooth in to not embarrass Patty. So, uh, so anyway, I, darling, I, forgive me again. <laughs> How about our text up there, uh, Chris? Is it already? I'm looking for something I already had. Read this with me. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because a servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. I was uh, standing behind this pulpit in 1984. This one they brought, Chris brought back out. First sermon. <coughs> Many of you were there, Dave and Jean, and 1984. Prodigal son had come home and to a church family that received me, not condemned me because I'd wandered off, but like the precious lady God gave me forgave me and welcomed me home. 
Doyle was the first, <laughs> first one I could get to when I repented, you know, and for wise counsel because I trusted him because he was my friend. And this church is full of friends. We have, uh, we've had our ups and downs. Life's roller coaster. We're maturing together. We're growing together. We laugh together. We cry together. Oh, the tears we've shed in this place together. Friends. Forever friends. And many here are not physically here, but you were friends and I were friends. We've shared friendships as we walk this course of life together, all centered around the nucleus of this place, First Baptist Church of Williams. I can remember when I was 13 years old, I fell off my bicycle and I, and I broke my shoulder. And I was in Aniston Memorial Hospital getting some, an operation. And uh, Royce McGinnis comes through. And I'll never forget, this is a bookmark moment in my life. Royce McGinnis, and I'm laid up in the bed with a broke shoulder, 13 years old. And he is radiant. He's this big smile on his face. And he gave me a cigar because his son Wendell was born. I didn't make myself sick smoking that one. But, but the memories, friendships. I realize now why we are friends forever. You are learning to let the best friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, befriend you. And I'm learning to let him befriend me. And there's the three-strand cord that cannot be broken. Now, let's take just a few minutes and look at the characteristics and the qualities of a friend. Let's look at the Lord Jesus Christ, the best friend, the perfect friend. And in doing so, it will transform us into that same image. You become what you look at. What you're focused on, what you're considering you become. That's why we're tormented by fear because we feed on fear every night on the news, in the newspapers. You become what you look at in experience. That's why we come here. Let's look at Him. Let's look at the living Word. And in doing so, we lose ourselves. We're saved from ourselves in the light of the glorious presence of Jesus who is in this place. Jesus Christ, our best friend. Take the word, F-R-I-E-N-D. The F means the Lord Jesus Christ, the best friend, is a forgiving friend. I can't say that I don't hurt. Can't say that I don't cry. Sometimes I try to place the blame for the pain I feel inside. What can I say? How can I pray when the wrong's already done? I turn my eyes to Calvary and see the victory is won. And I forgive them. Like you tell me to, I forgive them. We know not what we do. Who am I to criticize or condemn another sin? Father, from my heart, I forgive them. Thank you, God, for giving me a way to share your love. Each time I turn the other cheek, I feel power flow from above. You were punished for my sin when you died on Calvary. So the least I can do is forgive them too the way you've forgiven me. Our best friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, is a forgiving friend. The R is the best friend our Lord Jesus Christ gives us rest. It's in Matthew 11. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and get to know me. Get to learn me. Get to know me. I'm meek and lowly of heart. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. And you'll find rest for your soul. My brother the deacon says, God expects me to tithe every dime. God expects me to be at church every time my door's open. God expects me to dominate my kids. God's keeping a record of every wrong that I ever did. Brother Deacon's duty bound sounds like he might have a little trouble coping. If he's walking in the light, then tell me how come he's angry and full of strife. God, I can't tell him that you don't expect those things. 
but I don't like his attitude and the bondage that it brings. Would you give me a little bit of light and help me see? And God says, Son, do you think I expect you to breathe? If you'll let me love you, what you're supposed to do will come naturally. So we're not duty bound, we're love free. We don't walk around bound by responsibility. We serve Him out of love. We want to, don't you see? We're not duty bound, we're love free. The modern day Tower of Babel has got a steeple. I've never seen so many committed, burned out people. A love affair with Jesus can't be taxing. A labor of love can even be relaxing. So we're not duty bound, we're love free. F-R-I-E-N-D. The F is your forgiving friend. The R is he gives you rest. And the I, he lives in you. Colossians 1.27, the mystery of the ages. Always a mystery. Don't try to understand it. You're not going to get him in a box. You cannot wrap your finite mind around an infinite being, the almighty creator. The mystery of the ages is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's where you get your hope. Who are those that are walking through this apparently hopeless world with hope? Those who have received the friendship of the Lord Jesus Christ and from within you, He gives you hope. And here's what hope is. Having an overcoming perspective of everything. The mystery of the ages is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Consider this. It's in the Word. We need not die to go to heaven. Jesus died to bring heaven into each and every heart. Mama's with Him, and He lives in me, so we can't be far apart. Mama's not dead and gone. She lives on and on. Mama's not dead and gone. The kingdom of God is within you. Luke 17, 24 makes it clear. The Holy One has come to befriend you and the loved ones we hold so dear. The kingdom of God, your best friend, lives within you. Isn't that precious? It's the vine and the branch. Now John 15 has a whole new meaning. We're learning to let the vine flow through the branch. That's what Paul meant. When he said, I self-will am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who has befriended me and lives within me as the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's a forgiving friend. He's a friend who gives rest. He's a friend who lives in you. And E, I'm going to have to excuse me a minute I get water. <laughs> See, when you're among friends, you can just be yourself. Yes, so thank you. <laughs> e, our best friend is an encourager. He's an encourager. You know, sometimes he says, your soul is going to need to be restored. Sometimes we grow weary and we're tempted to lose heart. And the fear and the hopelessness and the anger and the stress and the strife all around us. And we get discouraged. That's when we are reminded that our best friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, is here to encourage us. Now here it is in our Bible. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 1 is the great cloud of witnesses. Mama ain't dead and gone. Verse 2 says, Consider Jesus. The author and perfecter of our faith, consider Him. He despised the shame. But there was a joy set before Him, allowed Him to endure it. Consider Him so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. That means if I'm growing weary and I'm losing heart, I'm considering me instead of Him. I'm considering politicians instead of Him. I'm considering the economy instead of Him. 
I'm considering the crime all around it instead of Him. We change our perspective. We begin to consider Him rather than considering anything else. Consider Him though, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Here's how you do it. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, be anxious about nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request known unto God and the peace of God that passes to all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. And whatever you're going through, you can faith it or you can fear it. Fear involves torment. Perfect love casts out fear. And here's how you fight the fight of faith. Not fight sin, not fight flesh, not fight the world, not fight the Antichrist, not fight anything but the fight of faith to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That is the weapons of our warfare. Read about it in 2 Corinthians 10. Mighty through God and casting down those imaginations, bringing every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And there are no greater words than thank you. Do it. You have to deny yourself to do it sometimes, but that is the sacrifice of faith. Thank you. Now listen, you're going to be out of here a whole lot longer than you're in here. As long as we are in here, it's but by a breath. You're going to be out of here a lot longer than you're in here. Fear not. Why not enjoy the time you got left? How do you do it? Two words. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your love that never fails. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your love that will prevail. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for your love that never ends. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for being our dearest friend. Friendship rules and friendship reigns. Jesus, our encourager. He's a forgiving best friend. He's a best friend that gives you rest. He's a best friend that lives within you. He's a best friend that encourages you in. And this is going to surprise some people. The real Jesus. Now you know there's many counterfeits. He even said many will come saying I'm Christ and deceive many. The real Jesus is nice John 3, 17, I didn't come to condemn you. So why are you condemning yourself? Why are you condemning each other? I didn't come to condemn you. A lot of people are accused of being anti-Christ when in reality they are anti-pseudo-Christ. And if anybody's got a Bible claiming to be a Christian and condemning other people, that's not him. The real Jesus says, I'm meek, I'm lowly in heart. I didn't come to condemn you, I came to save you. The real Jesus is irresistible. He's the one we were created for and our souls are restless till we find rest in Him. And through a blood-soaked cross, He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Do you catch fish by throwing rocks at them? Richard? <laughs> then how can He make us fishers of men if we're throwing stones at them? Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Seem so many far so long misunderstand exactly what it is He means. We see brothers against brothers accuse, criticize, and condemn. The only way in the world we're going to love each other is by first receiving love for Him. And we'd rather lift Jesus up instead of putting one another down. We'd rather receive His love and spread it all around. Why get all wrapped up in hell when heaven is a coming down? We'd rather lift Jesus up instead of putting one another down. There is a brand new day dawning. The power of God's love is breaking through. I receive your friendship. I receive your love. And brother and sister... I'll gladly lay down my life for you no matter what you've done and no matter what you do because we'd rather lift Jesus up instead of putting one another down. We'd rather receive His love and spread it all around. Why get all wrapped up in hell 
When heaven is a coming down, do you see it? You don't see it if you're walking in the counsel of the ungodly of this world. Would you dare to give Facebook as much time as you give Facebook? Would you dare to take your first waking moments in that one day, in this one day that may be your last, will you dare begin the day with I love you, Jesus, thank you. I want to spend some time with you. I want to hear your voice to go out in this beautiful, vast creation surrounded by God's love. And I promise you, Darkness does not threaten light. And the father of lies, the God of this world, is a deceiver. That's all he can do. And it's a lie that has people in bondage. It's a truth that sets us free. But when you live around people that think two and two is five, you start believing it yourself. you got to get alone and get reminded of the way the truth and the life and the truth sets you free. The truth was the truth will forever be truth. And me believing truth don't make truth truth. It's me waking up to truth that liberates my soul. The truth of God's unfailing love demonstrated through a blood-soaked cross. Jesus Christ, our best friend, is a forgiving friend, is a friend that gives rest, is a friend who lives in you, is a friend who encourages you, is a nice friend. D. Finally, brethren, D. Jesus Christ, our best friend, our perfect friend, takes the sting out of death. He's the comforter. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil. Because you're with us. Your rod and your staff, they comfort us. You are our friend who is the death defier. His body was shutting down. Mm hmm. George, we need an organ. <laughs> Later. His body was shutting down. Mm hmm. The old man was dying. Mm hmm. The family gathered around. Oh, yeah. Some of them were crying. Mm -hmm. They said, Doctor, is there any hope? Mm -hmm. He said, None. Then the old man quietly spoke. I beg to differ with you, Doc. I got hope because I know the best is yet to come. We believe the best is yet to come. We believe the best is yet to come. No matter what the people say, no matter what comes our way, we're heading for a brighter day following the sun, S-O-N, and the best is yet to come. The Lord is my shepherd. He's all that I need. Green pastures and still waters is where He leads. He restores my soul. He's always awake, guiding me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. With His rod and His staff, He's always near. He prepares a table just for me in the presence of my enemy. He anoints my head with all my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy will follow me everywhere I go. And I know I'm going to dwell in His house forever. I'm going to dwell in His house forever. And after all is said and done, do you see it? Because of our best friend, the Lord Jesus Christ, the friend who sticks closer than a brother, the friend who has forgiven us, the friend who gives us rest, the friend who lives inside of us, the friend who encourages us, the nice friend, the death-delivering friend. Do you see the good news of this gospel? But what about the people you're with every day? Are you letting them see Him in you? If I get saved, would it make me like you? Jesus, let us, let me be reminded.
to deal with every individual person is if it's our last physical moment together. And I see all of the trivial things that don't matter, that get us so distracted. My friends, thank you, First Baptist Church of Williams. Thank you for taking me and my family in when I was in the fifth grade. And giving me some roots And loving me even when I went astray. And giving me opportunities. And you did what? You affirmed me when I said I was called to preach. (laughs) And you've kept on loving me and my family. And how awesome it is. How awesome it is. That our children and our grandchildren have Williams community as home amongst friends who are learning to let the Lord Jesus Christ befriend you. Friendship rules. Friendship reigns. The power of love cannot be contained. Never mind the foolish ones who criticize, condemn, complain. Friendship rules and friendship reigns. And what a friend we have in Jesus. Let's stand for the invitation.